So a Chinese car company just demoed a humanoid robot whose movements were so much smoother and more human-like than anything seen before that the audience and most of the internet were convinced it had to be a guy in a suit, just like Tesla's early Optimus stunt. So the engineers did the only logical thing. They cut open its leg on stage and showed the motors and wiring to prove there wasn't a person inside. This is the latest entry into the quickly developing humanoid robot race where Tesla, Xpeng, and half of Silicon Valley are all racing to build a human from scratch. But here's the thing, even with all the hype, billions in funding, and the smartest AI brains on Earth, the robots still kind of suck, at least for now. But should we still be worried about the direction these companies are moving in? Today, we're diving into what Xpeng's new iron humanoid really is, why all the top companies suddenly wants to build a human robot, and how the dream of combining human-shaped bodies with current artificial intelligence models isn't going quite as planned. Iron stands about five foot eight, basically the height of your average engineer, and weighs around 70 kilos. It has 60 joints, over 200 degrees of freedom, and runs on Xpeng's in-house Turing AI chip. They claim it can perform basic factory tasks, lift heavy objects, and maintain human-like balance. But the part that really blew people's minds wasn't the specs, it was the realism, the proportions, the way it walks, even the subtle movements Xpeng intentionally designed it to look familiar. When the CEO brought it out, people genuinely thought it was an actor, until they cut open its bionic leg. That moment went viral instantly, because it wasn't just a tech reveal, it was a statement. A car company, not Boston Dynamics, not NASA, not a robotics lab, had built a human-shaped worker. And if you're wondering why Xpeng would even do that, it actually makes sense. Xpeng already makes electric cars and autonomous driving systems, so they have the supply chains, the actuators, the sensors, the AI experience, all the same building blocks you'd need for a humanoid robot. And now, they're aiming to mass produce iron by 2026. If all goes well, it could be here within the next year. Of course, Xpeng isn't first. They're joining what's quickly becoming a global gold rush. Tesla has Optimus, a robot that Elon says will eventually cost less than a car. Figure AI has Figure Zero One a smooth white robot that can already handle warehouse tasks and hold basic conversations. Agility Robotics is rolling out Digit, designed to work in Amazon's facilities, and companies like Sanctuary AI, Unitree, and One X are all showing off new prototypes every few months. Now, why is the competition so insanely heated? Because whoever builds the first useful humanoid robot doesn't just win bragging rights, they win entire industries. Imagine a robot that can work in factories, shipyards, construction sites, homes, all without needing special equipment or retraining. It redefines entire industries and our very ideas about work and employment. And for better or worse, these corporations have become absolutely obsessed with the market potential of being a first mover in this revolution. And investors are seeing it too, adding fuel to the fire. Billions are flowing into humanoid robotics startups right now. But there's something strange about this race. Everyone's racing to make robots that look exactly like us. Same proportions, same joints, even the same awkward gait. And it makes sense to ask why we try to build a human robot instead of a box on wheels that can do the same thing. Why? Because humans built a world for humans. Our tools, our stairs, our doorknobs, they're all designed for two arms, two legs, one head. So if a robot wants to fit into our world, it has to play by our rules. The humanoid shape isn't vanity, it's compatibility. But while the body is starting to catch up, the brain, not so much. Here's the uncomfortable truth. These robots are incredible to look at, but most of them can barely do what a toddler can. They can walk, maybe carry a box, wave hello, but put them in a real environment, a messy kitchen, a crowded warehouse, a slippery floor, and they struggle. Because real life is chaotic, and human movement within a dynamic environment isn't something you can fake with neat lines of code. Every muscle, every reflex, every subtle adjustment is the product of billions of years of evolution. And we're trying to recreate that with servos and Python scripts. And even if you give the robot a powerful AI brain, say a large language model like GPT-4 or Claude, it doesn't magically make it good at moving. LLMs are great at language and reasoning. They can write essays, plan schedules, summarize books, but they have no idea how gravity feels. They don't understand physics, momentum, or what happens when your left foot slips on a banana peel. So when researchers started connecting LLMs to robots, asking them to, say, make a sandwich or fold laundry, the results were hilarious. They'd misinterpret instructions, drop things, or start talking to themselves. One experiment even had the robot stop mid-task and announce, I think I am alive. Yeah, we're not quite ready for that. Even Tesla's latest demo, Optimus folding a shirt, was impressive. Until you realize it was done in a perfectly controlled setup. 
In the wild, that shirt would have been halfway across the room. We may have built bodies that can move like humans, but the brains are definitely more behind that these demos are pretending. So with the latest powerful LLMs, ChatGPT, Perplexity, Grok, you might be wondering, can't we just plug these into the robots and let it go wild? It turns out knowing what to do and knowing how to do it are completely different problems. Large language models can tell you how to make a cup of coffee. They'll describe every step perfectly. But to actually do it, to grab a mug, sense the handle, pour liquid without spilling, requires something called embodied intelligence. It's the ability to connect reasoning with real world motion, and that's where everything breaks down. When you hook an LLM up to a robot, you're essentially asking a brain that's lived its whole life in text to suddenly start juggling dishes. And the leap to bring that to physical senses and physical behavior is massive. So companies are now trying to train AIs that can see, feel, and act at the same time what's called vision language action models. Xpen claims iron is powered by one. Tesla is training its FSD driving data to teach Optimus how to perceive environments. NVIDIA just released Project GR00T, a foundational model for robot learning. And OpenAI, Google, and DeepMind are all racing to teach robots the language of movement. But the catch? We're still in the baby steps phase, literally. Most of these systems can barely pour water or fold a towel without human oversight. AI can think faster than ever, but it still can't walk across a room reliably. Okay. So if the dream's still decades away, why does any of this matter? Because we're closer than we've ever been and moving at lightning speed. Every generation of robots gets a little steadier, a little smarter, a little cheaper. And Xpeng's iron is proof that humanoids aren't just lab toys anymore, they're products. Right now, Xpeng says iron is already doing small tasks in their own factories, and that might sound small, but remember, that's how automation always starts. First the factory, then the warehouse, then your living room. And governments are already taking this seriously. China announced plans to make humanoid robotics a strategic national industry, basically the same level as EVs or semiconductors. South Korea just launched a K-Humanoid Alliance. And in the US, companies are quietly building infrastructure for what could be a trillion dollar market. So whether we're ready or not, humanoid robots are coming. And the first ones that actually work won't just change how we live, they'll change what it means to be human. So here's the question. What happens when we finally build something that looks, moves, and maybe even thinks like us? Xpeng's iron fooled people for a few seconds. The next generation might fool them for good. And if we've learned anything from AI so far, once a technology starts to feel human, we start treating it like one. We name it, we trust it, we talk to it, we forget it's a machine. And that's where things get tricky because these robots aren't conscious yet. They're just really good mirrors, but I think it's important for us all to be aware of where these advances are currently and where they're moving because the implications are huge and should be considered carefully before we get in too deep to something we don't really want. So yes, Xpeng's iron looks stunning, but under the hood, it's still learning to walk just like the rest of us. The humanoid race has officially begun, but humanity's still figuring out what finish line we're running toward. Would you trust a humanoid robot in your home What's the first thing you'd have it do? Fold your laundry, clean the house, or just stand guard while you doom scroll? Drop a comment below and make sure to subscribe for more straightforward tech reviews and news.